Right, we do have a hippo indeed. We are on the southern boundary on Arethusa, and we have found this rather large hippopotamus who is just resting at the moment with a couple of oxpeckers on its back. And I'm not sure what the oxpeckers are doing, if they are munching away, picking on parasites, but I do see a bit of movement, so they could also be having a little bath on the other side. But aren't they gorgeous creatures, the red-billed oxpeckers? Now they've heard something else. Look at them scurrying along the back of the hippos. Two have flown off already. And this chap is staying put. He's now got an entire hippopotamus to feast on. All by itself. Isn't that amazing? Look, as you're looking at this hippo so close, look at all the cuts and things that it has on its body. Isn't that just amazing? We don't often get to see, especially with all the dams being so full, we haven't seen it for ages, where we've seen an entire exposed hippopotamus. And most of those scratches will be from fighting, and they look like they've healed relatively well. A couple of them can also be from scratches from the thorns and things like that as they move through the animal pathways while they're grazing. Let me just turn the radio down. But this is a lovely spot. I think if I was a hippo, I'd also stay here. Because you've got a fair amount of water to keep you nice and cool. But you've also got some overhanging shrubs that will help cool you down. And if you remember, James had requested to, that I show you a buffalo thorn. If you look to the right hand side of your screen. Other right, Craig? There we go. That shrub over there is a buffalo thorn. Now, I would, obviously I'd love to show you the thorn. So we'll still try and find one that I can reach and pick. But I'm not feeling brave enough to go over and try and pick one of those leaves while that hippopotamus is right there. So that's what it looks like. And we'll, it will eventually do some further inspection and have a look at the beautiful thorns. And we'll get Craig to even taste some of the leaves too. Because I don't know if he's had leaves yet, if he's had the leaves of the buffalo thorn. He does enjoy, very much like Steph, the Panicum Maximum grass. He eats that all the time. Hippie has obviously been out on a long walk. Now, I don't know where the bulk of the hippos hang around on Arethusa. I haven't really seen any in the Arethusa Dam. It's not particularly deep. We did see one in Red Dam the last time that we were here. But other than that, it's sort of like Juma. We don't seem to see big family groups. They love it around the Chitwa Dam. Are you blowing bubbles? No, he's just swishing his tail around, creating a, a bit of a whirlpool at the moment. But at, from the naked eye, you actually can't see too many uh, too many ticks. Nom nom nom. Mouthing the water. <laughs> hippos often mouth the water. Normally you see them mouthing though when there's other hippos around. And in combination with that, they will swish their tail around and defecate. It's almost a dominance display, but I don't know why he's doing it right now. Oh, he's just going to roll. Look at him. Look how he's swishing water all over his body with his tail. Seeing as though he's not able to do it on his own. Now, if you're worried and you think that he's acting a bit strange and he may look a bit sick, especially because he's laying on his side, don't worry, he isn't. This is very typical hippo behavior. I've seen hippos do full rotations, and uh, it's actually quite impressive. And I'll never forget when I was riding horses, it was always a good sign if your horse could do a full roll on its back because it meant that they didn't have a sore back. Thad, you're wondering if I've ever been charged by a hippo? Yes, I have. I've been charged by two hippos and it was not very fun. On a walk, I've also been charged by hippos many times in the Zambezi River. It was actually quite spectacular. Now, we obviously read about hippos and how they charge and the weight that they can may, make. And I, I, before I moved to Zambia, I'd watched a couple of videos and I thought, oh, okay, well, this is amazing. Until I experienced it for myself. That was a horrific experience, being charged by a hippo on a speedboat. So on the Zambezi River, you've got quite a few different, we've got a main channel and, and then it splits off. There's quite a few islands and things like that around. And... Um, and it's it's actually quite intimidating. Oh, let's watch him. Dop, 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 dop. He's having a great splash. He's having a wonderful time this morning. And anyway, so the hippos hang around on the shallow shores. And when they feel threatened, then they'll dive down into the deeper waters. They sunbathe on the banks, the sandy banks. And it's really quite spectacular because the Zambezi is littered with hippo wherever you go. Anyway, we obviously got a little bit too close to a breeding bull's pod 
and he was not very happy with that. And a big bull like the one that we're looking at now, he came charging at us. He was running on the shallow bank, and I kid you not, we must have had a wake of water that was about four foot high. And he kept up with the boat, and our boatman had the throttle right down going as fast as he could, and we had big engines on the back. And I was so impressed as to how quickly these animals could actually run. So yes, I've been charged a couple of times. Oh wow, look at the big teeth. Come on, do a big roll. Oh, this is so cool, what a lovely hippo. I love finding things like this when you're out in the bush, especially when you're able to have such a great close sighting and the animal is, of course, relaxed with you. As we've spoken about many times, normally opening their mouth and exposing the big teeth and the big tusks is a threat display, but not in this case. Now, Miles, you've asked if a lion or a group of lions would take down a hippo of this size, and, and in this particular instance, or if they were desperate. Uh, I, here, the lions are not so accustomed to water. They're not like the, the marsh pride in Botswana that are quite happily to swim, or even in Zambia. We used to see lots of lions coming in from Zimbabwe, just swimming through the Zambezi and then hopping out on the Zambian side. So they're used to water. Down here, uh, it's not their favorite thing. So I don't know, unless those lions were starving and there was absolutely nothing else, they may go in the water, but I highly doubt it. If this hippo was out on land, and it's one of the reasons why they also feed around at night, is if, you've, if you've, any of you have ever seen a hippo in the darkness, you can't see it. You, it's impossible. They just blend into the shadows. It's actually quite amazing. And, and they obviously feel a little bit safer moving around at night. Their eyesight's not too bad at night. And uh, they might, but a big hippo bull like this, bull like this would be a mouthful. Um, even for a big pride, you may need 20 or 30 lions to really take something uh, as large as this down. However, females with calves are often harassed at night by prides of lions and even hyenas. I'll never forget, I watched a documentary about a hippo that had just given, or well, a couple of days prior had given birth and she was moving around with her, her young calf and a clan of hyenas actually came around and tried to snatch it. And she put up a good fight, she tried to fend it off, but the little hippo ended up losing an ear, which is not a train smash. I mean, these animals are resilient and they're able to survive uh, things like that. But I just thought it was amazing how mom stood by her side and said, no ways, you're not taking my baby from me. And eventually the hyenas got bored and then moved off. I think they, they sort of were fearing for their lives at one point. But this chap has put on such a lovely show, and, and it's something I actually miss. My the thing that I miss the most is Zambia and the hippos. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but Brittany has just sent through a question. And remember, if you would like to ask any questions, you are welcome to. You can hashtag Safari Live with them on Twitter. Now, Brittany, you're wondering how do hippos sleep? Brittany, can you believe it that what we're doing now is we're actually watching this hippo have little siestas? So this water is not particularly deep. It's obviously resting. He's resting his head as he fights the branches now. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yes, you are an old boy. You've got beautiful tusks. How cool is that? And I promise you, he's not doing it towards us. Otherwise, he'd be facing us. He is so happy. Are you going to climb out? Look at this. This is amazing. He's just, I think he's just trying to find a nice, comfortable spot. Why don't you reverse your bottom? underneath that buffalo thorn. I'm also going to watch him because if he decides at one point that he isn't happy with us, we will have to do a bit of reversing. Oh, watch him. Look how he's marking his territory. Listen to that sound. This is so cool. This is the coolest hippo sighting I've had since I've been here at Safari Live. And down he goes. <laughs> He sort of looks like my dad a little bit. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> ah, very funny. My dad's going to have a heart attack now. But yes, yeah, so that was him marking his territory, defecating and then swishing the tail to spread open the dung. It's almost like what rhinos do as well. How after the male rhinos, the white rhinos, and the female and male black rhinos uh, will, will defecate. They will scrape their feet through their dung. And by doing that, it opens up the scent. Like we can now smell all that sort of that urine, that strong uric acid smell that you get from, from hippo dung. But that's quite cool. And then he might actually just reverse on in there, and then he'll be shaded from the sun as well. So this is a great little spot. So sorry, Brittany, your question, how do hippos sleep? So if you watch him now, he's having a bit of a siesta again, and, and hippos do this on and off. They'll either rest their heads on a bank or on each other. Normally they're in shallow areas, and then they, they just sort of sleep like that. 
he'll pop his nose up every now and then so that he can breathe and that's sort of um like how how we breathe they do the same thing it's a it's a normal response they don't have to actively think that they need to bob up to take a breath it just happens subconsciously they just do that he's big though he's not a small hippopotamus this i reckon if he was out of the vehicle he'd be about almost probably about two meters in length at least two meters in length so what's that six six foot just just uh yeah just over six foot and weight wise he's big i'd put him at about four thousand pounds Shio, now you're wondering how how long can hippos stay underwater for for quite some time let's see if he's going to show us his beautiful mouth again yes there he is 